Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. I feel like I haven't done a news roundup in ages and there's so many stories going on right now that I want to talk about and it would be too many videos to film. So instead I want to do like a really quick five minute hopefully video just going over all the headlines so let's get into it the first one which i think so many people will be interested in is new statistics coming out about who the average shopper is at shein so according to one study their average shopper spends a hundred dollars a month and is aged 35 and i think this is really interesting because until now we've been led to believe that it's gen z that's really fueling this ultra fast fashion monster and whilst they might be responsible in part for making them go viral on TikTok and whatever, it's actually millennials that are shopping from there. And also, I kind of want to touch on the fact that their average spend is $100 a month. And like I said in my other video, there's this whole debate going on about whether the argument that fast fashion is affordable is actually plausible. I mean, the average fast fashion shopper, according to these statistics, is spending $100 a month. That's an insane amount to spend on clothing that averages at like $10 per piece or whatever their average spend is. Maybe it's even lower than that. So you think you're buying 10 things a month and that's like maybe like a high guess. If things are like two pounds, three pounds for a top, then you're buying how many pieces? It's just insane. Also on this topic, Temu had six shows at the US Super Bowl and it cost them $42 million in advertising since every advert was $7 million each. And I just think that's insane, you know, that they're putting that much money into ultra fast fashion brands in an effort to reach US shoppers. I think it will be interesting with an advertising budget like that to see how long Temu can actually stick around because to be fair, they're trying to outcompete Shein, but they have so much less brand recognition, influencer deals, and they're obviously just shoving money at it in an attempt to increase those things. But I wonder if it will work considering Shein is slightly struggling. Um, and obviously all of the legislation happening around fast fashion right now is gonna hit ultra fast fashion brands the hardest. So yeah, I think it'll be interesting. I think it's kind of a desperate move from Temu and hints at like more of a wider issue going on. Okay, next, I saw this post on LinkedIn and I thought it was insane, so I wanted to share it. I feel like it represents a new level of fashion sustainability greenwashing. So someone said that they saw a fast fashion brand selling clothes that were made to look upcycled just in store, but were obviously brand new, brand new pieces of denim that they'd ordered from the same sweatshops that they were using for the rest of their collection. And the irony of it is insane. <laughs> so they can recognize that upcycling is becoming a massive trend with the younger generation. And like always, when the community creates something that they feel strongly about and proud about and are sharing between themselves, brands wanna try and capitalize on that any way they can. And instead of recognizing that what the actual basis of the upcycling is, using clothes again and again, trying to get them to last and taking that and using it with their own collection and their own fashion ways. They've just created new pieces and it's just insane. It's just a whole new level of capitalism for me. Um, yeah, so if I have to look at this, you do too. Next, Lululemon is facing renewed sustainability greenwashing allegations. So they're being called out by a group called Stand.Earth. They're basically alleging that the way Lululemon has been operating is at odds with its marketing slogans, it Be Planet slogan in particular. And honestly, it's been making a lot of headlines this week. I think it's blown up because Lululemon is obviously really popular with a certain demographic. And it's just interesting to see more and more that consumers and environmental agencies are stepping up, are taking brands to task, and it's increasingly working. Like this is really bad PR for them. And I think that's just interesting because I want to see more and more of that. And it shows that our efforts do work. Just a quick update on my weekend video, which I thought was really interesting. I saw something that I just wanted to add. And that was the fact that at New York Fashion Week, there were zero male plus sized models. And that is insane. And I think it's also a really under 
underrepresented topic that I didn't think of when I was doing my video. Um, and I think it's just something that's obviously not talked about at all. Male plus size models is just completely off the radar. Like it's not even the same league, it's like over here. And I think this statistic is really important. So I wanted to share it. Next, quite a big one. Germany is blocking new EU legislation coming into play that works towards a more sustainable fashion industry. Basically, I've spoken about this, but the new year legislation is designed to help regulate fashion supply chains. And it would mean that companies are responsible for labor abuse allegations and environmental damage in the companies they're working for in their supply chain, which is a big step forward considering until now, fashion has got away with, you know, outsourcing their production so they're not directly responsible for it. But a few politicians in Germany, which are pro-business, have raised concerns with the new legislation proposed and it stalled the whole process. Basically, it's a ticking time bomb now because it has to be preliminary approved soon before it can be passed in June. After June, if it's not passed, it may be dropped entirely and that's really bad news. So the whole situation is kind of on ten hooks right now. The whole fashion industry is kind of bated breath um, and it's really interesting and obviously not great. Um, again, it's just capitalism and the way our society puts capitalism above all else. But fingers crossed that the pressure from other countries makes Germany fold. Last kind of headline is really good news actually. There are construction plans for the world's first PET recycling center in France, which can process textile waste. Now, if you know, textile waste is really hard to recycle because clothes are often made up of a variety of different yarns and se separating those can be a really lengthy process. And on mass scale, it's almost been impossible until now. But this should make a really big leap into the world of textile recycling, obviously helping the circular economy. And that's just really great news. Last one, not really a headline, but an observation. And I kind of want to make a longer video about this. So I'd be really interested to know if you guys want to hear that. I've just noticed fashion is really pushing it bags right now. And I don't know why. I mean, I kind of do know why, because bags themselves are really good entry points to luxury. And obviously in a cost of living crisis, the like luxury market is in trouble and bags are typically cheaper than other products, obviously. So there's more chance of consumers buying them. And I've just seen so many headlines about the latest it bag and like whether that be, you know, the Uniqlo one that was selling for I don't know how much or there was another bag that was quite cheap recently that was being toted as the it bag. Um, and also the Rose new bag. I've just seen an article online that's like saying it's the new one and its success is due to the fact that they're constantly releasing new styles, new textures and stuff. And just this constant push for newness feels so at odds with where fashion should be right now that it's grating me. And I don't know if that's why I've subconsciously picked up on it more. But yeah, I really kind of want to talk about it. So if you want to see that video, let me know, I might make it. But anyway, I think that's all my kind of headlines I want to talk about right now. Um, I know this went on a little bit longer than I said, but I hope you've learned something. Please let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you have any thoughts on any of the stories and have a lovely week. I will see you very soon. Bye.